Battalion of President Heading, maintain 3,500 till established on the localizer. Third, the ILS 32 approach. What you can do to practice this are high speed taxis. Uh, make sure you have a CFI on board or at least a safety pilot, someone that can help you keep track of how much runway you have in front of you. And go to a long runway, 4,000 feet, 5,000 feet, preferably one that has precision markings. So they have those black signs on the side of the runway, the, the white letters that say four, three, two, one. Um, those numbers are thousands of feet remaining, so you can, add, whenever you see the two, you can just add full power and get out of there. But what you want to do is a high-speed taxi all the way down the length of the runway with the nose wheel off using the Lindbergh reference and the pie wedge shape created by the edge of the runway and, and your reference to make sure you're not drifting left, to make sure you're not drifting right. And when I do this with students, I will have them actually move the aircraft across the runway like this, just so that they can get a feel for what it looks like when you are drifting. So you're sort of practicing two things. You're kind of practicing uh, keeping the nose up past where the horizon exists, using the Lindbergh reference to control that pitch, and also practicing what that looks like when you drift across the runway, right? Like if you're going left toward the edge of the runway, you can see it. If you're going to the right toward the edge of the runway, you can see it. And that practice, and it won't happen right away. This is stuff that you have to go to the gym and work on. Um, let's see, only super tall dudes have no issue with 182s. Well, you know, it's funny. They actually do because when you're that high and you're looking down, you know, the forward over the, over the nose is not a great reference. I mean, it's what we've got, but it's very difficult to see minutia. Like if you go to the airplane flying handbook, you know, um, the FAA, where they show you how to fly, they're trying to get you to measure distance off the nose to the horizon. So you put like fingers up there, you maybe put a fist up there, try to see that distance. That's a pretty imprecise reference. I mean, you can get used to it, you can get good at it, but it's not, um, it's not the easiest reference to see. It's not the most specific. Uh, thoughts on mount mounting an iPad at the Lindbergh window when it's not completely obscured? I'm not a fan. Um, and I know that doesn't leave us a lot of places to mount the iPad. Um, I think what I would prefer is a mini iPad on the yoke. Um, I really wouldn't want to see you cover that Lindbergh reference area with pretty much anything. I do now sometimes with the camera. If you guys look at the YouTube channel, you can see sometimes I have a, like a hero camera back on the student and myself in my Lindbergh reference area. But I'm so conditioned to looking at it that I just look right past the camera. I, I, I wouldn't want to see somebody who's just uh, learning this concept or just new with this concept to block that area with anything. Uh, let's see, when given a vector, should I use my compass heading or ground track as a reference? When you're given a vector, you should use your compass heading for sure. The air traffic controller is going to compensate for the wind drift, but they assume that you're turning to a heading, not to a course or a track. All right, excellent. Let's see, thought, okay, thoughts on, and I think I didn't miss anything. Yeah, okay, good. So what you're going to find if you practice that high-speed taxi, and you do that a lot of times, like go to the gym, maybe every other lesson with your instructor. So sometimes you're out there just skill building. Other times you're practicing whatever it is you're working on, demonstrating maneuvers, cross-country flights, scenarios that your instructors invented to, that are kind of getting used to the real world. Um, intermixed with all that stuff you're going to the gym to practice this stuff what you'll find is that in the flare if there's any drift at all like you know those those crosswinds that i find to be the hardest crosswinds where there's like three knots of crosswind it's not steady it's not blowing hard it's not obvious but just as you slow down the airplane pivots just a little bit and you start drifting just a little bit you'll learn to see that minutia right through the Lindbergh reference so that you can stop the drift you can stop the, the yawing motion with rudder, stop the drift with aileron, and have what I call precision lateral control, even through the entire flare. So that is, that gets, that's pretty much what I wanted to tell you guys about the Lindbergh reference. Um, does anybody have any questions before we sign off here on Black Friday or any comments? Later on today at 11 a.m. Pacific, we're doing a hangout with patrons. Um, if you're interested in supporting the finer points and joining that, visit patreon.com slash learn TFP. Let's see, I always hated staring straight into space while doing stalls as a student pilot. Always felt so hopeless staring. Yeah, for sure. And it's amazing how many people feel like we all feel that way. If there's no data, if there's nothing for you to grab onto, if you're just a passenger throughout the stall, then it's, yeah, it's nerve wracking. So people tend to focus on... Um, Thank you <laughs> for the sweatshirt comment. People tend to focus on um, the ball 
which is okay, but it's, you know, it's inside the airplane. It's data that's not quite as fast as looking at the Lindbergh reference. I mean, I'll play a game with my students where I ask them to tell me which way the airplane is going to break before we actually stall. So I like slow down to minimum controllable airspeed, 16, 1700 RPM. So there's left turning tendencies, but not a huge amount of them. And then I'll just, I'll have the flight controls. My student will be looking at the Lindbergh reference and I will pull it into a stall and say, which way is it going to break before it goes? In a matter of minutes, people can tell which way it's going to go before it even happens. I know that sounds crazy, but your brain is fast and there are, are, there are little visual cues that you're not going to see registered on the ball. And if you're wrong, by the way, and the airplane does start to go into a spin, the last place you want to be looking is at the ball anyway. So um, 11 a.m. Pacific for the hangout today, by the way. Um, so anyway, as much as possible, you want your eyes outside. The only reason people don't have their eyes outside is because they don't have a reference to grab onto. It does feel uncomfortable looking into the deep blue abyss, waiting for the stall to happen. Um, and I see it all the time. I was just out on a flight, I think it was two weeks ago, where somebody was asking me to kind of review their performance before the check ride. And uh, he was doing exactly that. And so I showed him the stuff that we're talking about here today. And it was like a revelation, like, wow, I've never heard this before. So anyway, that's why we're doing this. That's why we're putting the videos out. Look up in the sky, there you are. Look up in the sky, there you are.